It's not thrilling, no. necessarily. I'm not thrilled. I won't get yeah. up on your butt, but... I get up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby. Today I'm here with my mom. Hey. What's up? <laughs> Today we're here because we are going to be starting on a buddy read reading vlog because I thought it would be a fun time because this book is Mother Daughter Murder Night. Absolutely, this is a mother daughter read. Yeah, so we were like, because it's we're mother no and daughter, yeah, we were like, it would make sense, right, for us to buddy read this. <laughs> yes, look yeah. at this. I know, and mom, of course, we're orange. You I know, we're right? orange today. To match so the book. I can make, you know. Yeah, why, why not? not? Why not? <laughs> And so today we are going to have to get started on this. Um, in this reading vlog, we are going to be talking about, spo I'm sure we'll be talking about spoilers at some point, but I will put spoiler tags on the screen anytime that we will be jumping into spoilers. So we will warn you beforehand. Um, so you can watch this video if you haven't read this book. This one is one that I'm excited to get into because I literally know really nothing about it other Me than either. that it was a Reese Witherspoon's book club pick last year, which is pretty cool. She's, um, she's amazing. This one, it just says it's a twisty whodunit about a grandmother, mother, and daughter daughter trio who come together as amateur sleuths to solve a murder in their coastal California, California. town. So it takes place in Woo California, which is also really cool because, know. you know, we're both originally yeah, from California. Grew up there, so yeah. yeah. So I think the fact that it takes place in California will be so pretty it cool. might have things in here that, of places. Because mm -hmm. why would it mention California unless it's going to yeah, hopefully it'll take have us places. all the California vibes. Ah. So we're going to go ahead and read the first little chunk here. I've kind of sectioned the book off into three separate chunks so that we can read the book in our own time right. and then come back together and talk about our feelings and our updates so far. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this. Yeah. And it's also so I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so bad at remembering <laughs> at the very end of a book and then you do the taping later, as you well know. Yeah. 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 So that's mom. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this and then we will update you once we've hit our first stopping point. Yeah, let's so let's do it. it. We are here with our first update because we've both read up to page 130 in Mother Daughter Murder Night And so we wanted to give a quick update kind of talk about the book talk about how we're feeling so far yeah. So the general synopsis for this one is that we're following these three characters So we have Lana who's like the grandmother. She's about 57. She's, she's pretty, pretty she's young. pretty young Yeah, pretty young yeah. for a grandmother and then we have her daughter Beth who's a nurse yeah. And then uh, her daughter, Jack, who's 15 years old and she's working at this kayak shop. So basically what this story is about is how Lana, right at the beginning of this book, she finds out that she has cancer. And so she's going to be moving back in with her daughter, Beth, so that she can help to take care of her, even though she really doesn't want to do that. No, they <laughs> like, didn't have a tight relationship. Yeah, so they didn't have the best relationship. And also Lana's like, very independent. So, like, uh, yeah. yeah, she's uh, very much like businesswoman, like wanting to get her shit done yeah. and like not be uh, taken care of in any sense of the word. Absolutely. Uh, but we actually jump forward four months later when she's been living with her daughter for four months. She's, she's going through the chemo. chemo treatment, yeah. And then uh, she sees this man with like a wheelbarrow out the window at like 2 a.m. going near the water because they live right by this slough, right and by this water. She's on her meds and stuff, so she doesn't sleep very good. Yeah, she doesn't sleep very well, but she's starting to wonder like, am I just delirious or like, am I seeing things or like, what is going on outside? It was kind of shady, right? And then shortly after that, her grand 
daughter, Jack, this 15 year old who works at the kayak shack. One of these days when she's out on the slough with like her whole team, they find a body floating in the water. Like there's yeah. this man floating in the water and he's clearly dead. And so she has to call the police and like all this stuff starts happening. And the grandma starts to wonder if what she saw could be connected to this man being like dead in the water. <laughs> but because uh, it quickly turns into a situation where because Jack was the one who found, like helped find the body in the water, the police start to wonder if she is suspicious, like if she could be involved in this for some reason. And so it's almost like the grandma going into full protective mode of like, absolutely not. Like the police will not be questioning this 15 year old girl. And it's almost like she's trying to protect her. So it's like the grandma's pursuing finding the truth so that she can protect the granddaughter is essentially like the premise of the book. So yeah, something that I think is really cool about this book, you know, cause we mentioned it takes place in California. Oh um, my god! But it actually, it takes place in this place called Elkhorn Slough, which I looked up on the map. It's actually just south of San Francisco. It's a real place, oh, is. which is I pretty cool, up, yeah. yeah. Um, so I love that it actually takes place in like a real town that, you know, is just south of San Francisco. So it's kind of more like Northern California or at least like mid California, whereas like we're from Southern California. So this is not a place that we probably ever would have actually seen. Yeah. So we were Southern California people. Yeah, yeah. It talks about, I, I l listed all the places. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, because, oh my gosh. And she just drops it all mm -hmm. the time, like name dropping. And I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh. Los Angeles, Getty Museum, 405 Freeway, UCLA mm -hmm. College, Stanford, Monterey Bay, Big Sur, Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, Santa Cruz, Fresno, <laughs> Silicon Valley, San Francisco, Malibu, Culver City, Catalina, yes. and Seattle. Wow. I don't know how that I know snuck Seattle in there. snuck in there too, I, I noticed. Yeah, and that was pretty cool because I think uh, it mentions a lot of the Southern California because mm -hmm. the grandma, right? She's mm -hmm. she's living in Southern California yeah, in the beginning, Los I think. Angeles. And then they like fly her back to mm -hmm. Elkhorn Slough. Yeah. But yeah, this book is it's definitely got the California vibes. Yeah, like so it has a lot of atmosphere that it takes place in California, which yeah. is something I think we both enjoy. <laughs> I wanted to ask like how do you feel about the characters so far and are there any characters that you're connecting with more than others? I think Lana. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I think, think Lana's maybe, the strongest perspective. I don't know if it's because I'm like the older person of the book, mm -hmm. but Beth, not so much. And yeah. actually, to be honest, Jack. Yeah. She's a spot on girl. That girl's a whippersnapper. Yeah. She's, they're all older for their own, for their own selves. I mean, mm -hmm. they're all one of those people, like you were saying, that they're very responsible, mm -hmm. independent, really go-getters and stuff. So they work really good in that in different areas, mm -hmm. which makes it a team effort yeah. of what's going on with the characters in the story right now. Yeah. No, I was going to say the same thing. I do think Lana, like the grandmother character, and then Jack, the daughter, uh, I feel like they're the strongest characters in this mm -hmm. book for sure. Like, I, I do feel like the character Beth, I feel like a little bit of a disconnect with her for some yeah. reason, or like, I don't quite, like, we're not on the same page with her. Right. But um, I really do, I feel like Jack, like this young 15-year-old girl, she is smart for her age. Like, really, she is really, really like, smart. yeah, really well-spoken. Mm -hmm. She's a very interesting character to follow. Right. And then, yeah, Lana, because she's such a, like, headstrong, like, independent kind mm -hmm. of woman who, like, feels like she doesn't want to be taken care of. Like, she feels like her life has been, like, kind of taken from but her right now. she knows the world. Mm -hmm. She's been around been from the, starting from the ground up, and yeah. she's built herself up, basically having the same life that she's talking about that uh, Beth has, kind mm -hmm. of. And Beth is working all the time, so it's no fault of hers yeah. that her, she's not leaning in on all this. She's hearing stuff, but it's kind of like... yeah. Yeah, because Beth is a nurse, so mm -hmm. she is, like, she works a lot of hours. But I really do like the characters so far. Yeah. I feel like this author is doing a really great job at making these characters feel so real. Like, they right. all feel so real, so well fleshed out. I can easily picture this story in my head. And, and I was wondering, I was going, I was trying to follow it easier by, like, who I would put to the characters. Oh, yeah. As, I, I know you guys sometimes all do that. I know. But it's like, uh, I'm wrapping my brain trying to think of, it's more somebody personal in my life than it is somebody who's out there except mm -hmm. for well i don't know that can, i think will establish itself later yeah. by in the book and stuff i really think lana because and we were talking earlier um because she's not from the area and she's not she doesn't know how everything kind of is naturally like day to day mm -hmm. and people she she has an easier vision from the outside because it's a small town, <laughs> people kind of overlook things, especially the police. Yeah. I think Lana has a lot of time on her hands now, and she's kind of starting to feel better 
in between her chemo and, and all that radiation. Yeah. I like that this gives her something to do that's like helping her family. It's stimulating um, to her. Yeah. In and I, I do like the writing in this. Um, like the writing kind of feels more like a cozy mystery, mm -hmm. which is not really what I was um, expecting. I mean, I don't really know what I was expecting, to be honest, from like the vibe of this. Like I didn't know if it was going to read like a typical like mystery thriller kind of vibe or if it would be more like cozy mystery, but it definitely has that like cozy feeling to it. It kind of like, doesn't it feel like Finlay Donovan? I, you know, yeah, what? right. I was it's say like, that. it's kind of like a Finlay Donovan is killing it. it it's like of. more lighthearted kind of like silly at times mm -hmm. but like it still has that cozy atmosphere and I don't know if it's because of like it feels like kind of small town you know family taking care of each other like it's got that cozy element to it mm -hmm. that I don't really know like how to put a finger on like why it feels that way but it also has that like compelling mystery because yeah. like there is you know something going on in the story where like this guy's died and now like grandmother's trying to protect there's Jack and there's dots kept connecting here and mm -hmm. you have to be aware of where it's going and that's I think where we're getting to at this point in the book yeah I think it's gonna start taking a, a, cha a drastic change I, I see the pivotal moments starting to happen and it's one of those you don't want to put it down mm -hmm. kind of thing I, I want to move yeah, on that's this. what I mean the writing is really engaging so far mm -hmm. like I'm having a good time with the writing so far and then just to jump into some spoilers before we move on just because we, we do okay, want to talk about some spoilers before we move on to the next thing so if you don't want to be spoiled up to page 130 which I don't even know if these would technically be that big of spoilers yet yeah. But if you consider up to page 130 some spoilers then just skip ahead a little bit to the next section But just to jump into some spoilers So something that I think is really interesting is that uh, we find out that there was this guy who recently passed away Where you know Beth is a nurse and she works at this like care home place, yeah. right? And so there was this guy there named Hall Rhodes and he had recently died he and old. Yeah, he was really old But he had these two children named Martin and Diana and it oh. seems like these characters are getting introduced a little bit later on Well, like not being on, flushed like, out like towards the end of this yeah towards the end of this section day, that we that we've read and so uh lana seems to think that there might be a connection between the guy that's like the owner of this kayak shop that the daughter works at jack works at there's this guy paul he's the owner of that shop and she thinks that he might be connected to the son of this guy that just died at the care home that's it right like she you thinks they're connected actually you you figured it out sooner than i did i don't know at what point i <laughs> put those dots together but well because she said that right in the book she's oh, like oh so. she's like i think that these two might be connected and that's why she thinks that maybe there was a connection between the deaths or there's something that's going to link the two well, deaths they have together to because they're involved with the same uh, yeah everything and they're next to each other yeah but i feel it's, like paul being involved is almost like too obvious at this point well he ends up gonna be taken this was it a weekend? So he wasn't there on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I guess, didn't. Yeah. I didn't go back to that. But I know he was gone for a few days and had Jack, fifteen years old, in charge. Yeah. So yeah. you know, whatever. It's a small town, and she was. She knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. But going further up, then it says, you know, all this stuff had happened, and they couldn't find Paul anywhere. It just so happens to be a kayak yeah at that guy's in place. the farm where yeah. the older guy it's his property yeah and so it's and, his and it was farm. one of his kayaks that was like mm -hmm. his company name mm -hmm. and then like the guy who died that was in the water he was wearing one of the life vests that was like the company's life the vest that's... and the other thing is that keeps she they keep putting numbers of how many kayaks and how many vests and mm -hmm. how many first aid kits and that kind of stuff so i'm trying to be um really aware of those that could be easter eggs leading to things further yeah. down for sure in the past that's what i mean i feel like paul though being involved is like it's too obvious at this point because like we're still so early in the book and like it's setting it up that like oh paul is involved where i feel like the twist is actually going to be that paul's being set up by somebody else like, that or say... taking care of other stuff while somebody does right and i do have some ideas on on where this is going i don't know if that's spoilery because yeah, no, oh, um sure. they don't <laughs> talk about scotty or scott whatever from the bar owner they're oh. buds i'm just putting it out there don't shoot the messenger <laughs> but i'm thinking that both of them had something to do with diana because maybe i mean she's killer looking i don't know and these guys seem to have it going on and mm -hmm. they're they're you know have a lot going on in the community which you know i don't know about her husband doesn't sound like they have much going but i have a feeling this was towards the end i was thinking you know what Maybe she she's got something to do because both of them have something to do with owning property like mm -hmm. Diana does. Yeah, Diana is it's it's funny because now she's 
getting involved with um, Lana because Lana, we didn't mention, was a real estate person, like right. a big person in L.A. Yeah. and stuff. So she's big on, on the industry of real estate, and that's where it gets kind of icky here because I think the reason why, well, Grandpa was dying, so mm -hmm. that's kind of a whatever. I mean, not that it's a biggie, but it just hap so happens he owns the property, and then the daughter has the property, and not even casually talking about this environmental mm -hmm. benefit to preserve, which is full of crap, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think they're just doing that to wiggle in and everybody's going with it, but yeah. knowing how things can be. So that's just my observation. Yeah. No, I think that's a, that's a good one. We're gonna read about like just a little bit over a hundred pages yeah. in these next couple of days. And then we'll come back at you like, with some more simple. thoughts. I, yeah, I can't wait. Cause I think this is, this next one's gonna have a lot. Yeah, I think a lot will turns. be revealed in the next mm -hmm. hundred pages. And so. I hope that I'm right. Well, we'll see you once we've caught up on the next couple of pages. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>another update because we've both read up to chapter 39 which puts us about 244 pages in so we only have about 100 pages yeah about left that. how are you feeling about the book right now just in general I'm kind of on mixed feelings because I'm just wondering where it's going and if I'm right or wrong mm -hmm. with my predictions yeah I feel like in this last little bit for me personally the stories felt so slow it feels like there's just a lot of things happening that are just like not really moving the plot forward. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like there's a lot. Of, I feel like maybe this is an element of like the cozy mystery genre that I just don't really care for, I guess. Right. Where it's just like, it's a lot of like things that, oh, you think that's going to mean something and then it doesn't. And then it just yeah. feels like kind of wasted time. Right. There's a lot of filler. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. It's starting to feel like there's a lot of filler. Um, but I do feel like something that was really done well in this last section that we just read is it's starting to really flesh out the relationship between Lana and Beth which mm -hmm. is something that I feel like was kind of missing from the beginning because I feel like I haven't really been connecting with Beth's character as much as, you know, like the grandma character, Lana, and then the daughter, Jack, like the youngest girl, I feel like they're really fleshed out, but I feel like Beth's character hasn't been as fleshed out. But now I feel like in that last section that we yeah, read, I, 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 I start to time. get more, yeah, like you're starting to get a little bit more of like their backstory as mother and daughter and like why their relationship is kind of strained. Right. And so it is interesting to learn a little bit more about them as characters. Yeah. Um, but just like overall the plot right now, in general is just it feels a little slow to me it's it's making me think a little bit of like each character a little different other than maybe thinking i know mm -hmm. the thing that intrigues me the most about this book is the characters and like the relationships that you know the grandma and the daughter and her daughter have like i really like the characters and their relationships but i also feel like we're starting to hit a point in the book where i don't even know if it's really like about solving the murder anymore, you know? Like, I don't know, it's just starting to feel a little bit boring. Like, as soon as I hear phrases like conservation easements and I'm, tax write-offs, yeah. like, I'm sorry, my brain just like shuts down. I'm I like, I don't no care. Idea. Yeah, I, it's, think, I think they're doing that to draw Lana in yeah. to more information she know, needs to know as a real estate yeah. mogul person. And also it's kind of given her some insight as to what's going on with everything. That's what I mean. So that's kind of where yeah. we're at in the story right now. It's starting to feel like feeling like it's dragging just a little bit yeah. um, or like I'm ready for things to really pick up and get interesting. But just to touch on some spoilery things that have happened in this last little I section. I say stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to touch on some spoilers. Oh, there was a fire. Lana got, like, was the fire intentional? Was it not intentional? Like, I'm being detective here. I mean, Lana's really um, 
<laughs> go get her mom you know how many fires have to kill how many people lana could have been one of them but she got out with her stilettos mm -hmm. so i'm just saying all of those are connected and alejandro was ricardo's dad sophia was his mom who i believe is mr rhodes mother of ricardo i believe ricardo is mr rhodes son sophia's the mom that's why they killed Sophia in the barn. That's why they killed Al, um, Ricardo because he knows stuff and he's too involved. They were trying to kill Lana because she's really getting into it and that makes Jack even more be careful. Mm -hmm. But they're all in, they're all on to, if, if Mr. Rhodes didn't do it physically, he's had it done. Paul is trying to get rid of evidence protecting he's in a weird place right now because he's with jack on one side business which also just got interrupted with all this kind mm -hmm. of it's like coming around i guessed a few things right before feeling a little bit predictable but also like i'm just losing interest very fast because like i don't care that much i i do care about like whatever happened to ricardo like what caused his death but i also feel like i don't care that much because now we're getting to the point where it's like it's about this property and like who's gonna own the property and like the whatever with the family and i'm like i don't care about that at all like zero and where it's care. going in that direction how would we understand that enough to make that worth killing the only thing that's to, to hide is what they're doing with the land mm -hmm. why they're doing it this is ozark yeah 101 <laughs> working on trying to put deeper stuff i'm kind of yeah. a depth person intriguing because i want to see i want to see if i'm right with my predictions and to be honest if i guessed it that has a lot to do with my rating one star let's yeah. <laughs> jump to conclusions well i think too like there was a lot of this section that just like kind of felt repetitive and was bothering me because it would be like, you think a character's in danger, but then they're actually not. You know, it just kept feeling like, like say when Jack goes missing, it's like, oh my God, she's not at her school. Oh my God. Like there was this whole thing of like, where's Jack? Oh my God, she's missing. No. And then she's just on the slew. Yeah. Like she was just spying on some dude. It's not thrilling. No. Necessarily. I'm not thrilled. No. <laughs> no I'm not. I really like the style because other books I've read go back and forth with eras and time frames and all that kind of stuff, which is a you know a huge way to to try to really comprehend or each chapter is a person yeah you know so this is a whole different writing style that i've recognized and i think it's an easier flow for me mm -hmm. because it doesn't you just get them all right there when they're there yeah. the information that you need and that kind of stuff instead of looking back especially if there's more characters yeah. That's the frustrating part because then you have to really tie, which is really good for people that have read like a lot. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Like right now it's feeling like two to three star territory for me. I'm so jury's out and I'm not going <laughs> to reveal because we don't normally do that till the very end. Well, so that's just how ahead. I'm feeling right now. Like we'll see if things improve or maybe get worse. Like, I don't know. We're going to read the final section. And then we'll come back at you with some thoughts once we've both finished yeah. it. Oh, stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time. Morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Forgo. Give up everything that I can't sit on her butt. <laughs> I won't get you up. sit on your butt, but I get up. I know, but I <laughs> I'll help you up. And now you're comfy. Old lady. <laughs> that wore my orange sweatshirt. Wow, you're like, always matching you and like I'm it? not. It's I mean, Woodstock. I kind of am. I'm black and you're the orange. Together we've it, made this book. It's Woodstock. Peace, love, music. Right? That's all there is. <laughs> okay. We're back. <laughs> Hi, we're here because we finished it. 
gold star for us. <laughs> Yay! Woo! We finished it. <laughs> I think I'm um, pretty proud of myself. Yeah, so just general thoughts before we jump into spoilers. General thoughts, how did you feel about it? What's your rating and why? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go so first. start with it. Um, I think mm -hmm. my overall rating is probably gonna be a three star. I thought this book was fine. It was a fun time. It's like a cozy mystery. I think if you're a person that likes cozy mysteries, I think you would actually really enjoy mm, this. So I think, <laughs> well, I think I went into this with the wrong expectation, okay? Because I really thought that this was going to be like a mystery thriller. I thought it was going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and you were the one liking it in the last update. Yeah, but <laughs> and I felt so bad because, okay, sorry, I'm just yeah, so what, in here. What's your rating? Spoiler, I didn't like it. Oh, uh, what um, was your rating? I would probably give it a two. A two? Only because why did you have to make me go through that whole thing? Oh yeah, it was like, like frustrating. I kind of a little bit was pissed off. It was just a lot of like this author doing misdirection, misdirection, and this means nothing, and here's some more things that don't yeah, mean anything, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, so after we had our last conversation, I don't know how this was working, <laughs> but we both went back and we started reading the other part, and I went, oh, Gabby's just gonna die here. <laughs> we, uh, based on how we left it, yeah. oh my God, and those first few pages or whatever, I'm going, mm -hmm. she's, that's it. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, to be fair, though, this is the kind of book where, like, the ending is a bit of cheese, you know? Like, there's a lot of cheese. I feel like, for me, this is something that would work better as a movie for me, personally. I like, think it'd be great right? if you're a kindergarten nurse. <laughs> I'm it's, I'm sorry. it's, like, low I'm sorry. stakes, you know, like, very low stakes. I think it's, um, what do you call it, um, first kind of books that they have. Oh, well, this is Young a debut. Adult. This is a debut. And it's also young mm. adult. Oh, I it feels think. young adult. Yeah, yeah, because or like I mean, intended for a younger somebody audience. that wouldn't get it. Oh, you know, I, I mean, I, I mean, it's too predictable. Not to say younger don't have you know the capability of the stretch of being predictable, but you know, being it's her first book and stuff. I mean, she does it. She writes good. Mm -hmm. It's just too much. Yeah, she needs that grammar C or whatever that is. That, <laughs> That kind of cuts, cuts it down. down, it breaks all the goods, you know? Yeah, I do think this is definitely more on the cozy side. Um, something that I do think is really great about this book, though, is the characters. You know, I really feel like the characterization is done very well in this book. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. to me, I feel like Lana, Beth, and Jack, like all three of the women, felt like real characters. Like, they mm -hmm. felt like real people. Like, they really leapt off the page. Yeah. I thought they got to know each other really good. I, I like that whole... That whole part of it you know yeah. what i mean the deeper meaning it's definitely got that like small town kind of california coastal vibe so i was i was satisfied with like the setting of the book i mean some of the mystery intrigued me but most of it didn't to be honest yeah i took didn't all really, kinds of notes it didn't yeah. matter <laughs> didn't really care it didn't matter like as as far as mystery goes it wasn't really like a huge payoff it was just like oh and, and when we talked mm. last time <laughs> i guess there were spoilers so i can't spoil it again yeah. but there was a a lot of same and maybe yeah. worse parts, mm -hmm. which spoilers I'll reveal, but yeah. So overall, it was fine. It was great. Just having yeah, it time was, with you. It was a good time to do this. You got to see her a couple more times than I usually do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would love to know if you would like to see us do this again in the future yeah. for a different book, like maybe yeah. another thriller coming out later this year. I think yeah. that would be fun to do this what? again. But I do think overall, this is a book that is really just like kind of not my taste. But I do think if you are the kind of person who likes like a fun kind of cozy mystery thr kind of mystery book. Cozy stuff. I don't it's just know. cozy. Yeah. Like, do you not think like, it's cozy? It's cozy. It's like small town, like good characters and like amateur sleuths. It's definitely got the like cozy okay, mystery cozy. vibes. Guess, yeah. Because yeah. like in a cozy mystery, it's like the police aren't as involved. It's like the amateur sleuth, like the grandma that's taking over the case, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of a cozy mystery like feel. Nancy Drew. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so if you're not into... Uh, so if you're into a cozy mystery, maybe this will be a home run for you. Yeah. But for us, it was just fine. So we will be getting into spoilers now so if you have not yet read this book or you haven't finished it or you don't want spoilers for the rest of it then now is where we part ways because we are going to be talking about the rest of this book with spoilers and all of our thoughts yeah. now i'm not gonna lie okay there were some parts that i liked and then some parts that i were like bro this is so fucking cheesy yeah. well, well we'll take up most of the time for that but. yeah like something that i liked was that i liked how lana started to get paul involved with like trying to prove why it wasn't him because you know paul was this guy like he was the one who owned this shack right Right? And he was trying to, like, the police were after him. Like, they thought that he was the one that killed yeah. Ricardo. So I liked how Lana was, like, trying to use Paul to, like, help prove why it wasn't him. And so she was like, I need your help. And, like, he was going to be there to help with that. And then I liked how there was one, <laughs> well, there was one part, like, I kind of liked the final dinner scene with, mm -hmm. like, there's, like, this 
huge dinner with like Martin and Diana and then like all three of our you know main girls here and there's a huge like dinner scene where like all the truth gets revealed and like everything comes out and you know Martin um ends up becoming our like cheesy movie villain man mm -hmm. all of a sudden he just turns very movie villainous cheesiness but it was kind of funny because after that scene I liked how Jack like hit him with the kayak I know <laughs> that's how girl. he took the gun I thought that was funny because it like tied it into the whole like kayak thing and it was just kind of like cheesy and fun and kind of silly so I mean some of this ending definitely was a little bit silly it was a little silly it was a little out there it's not how I think of a book that I would expect to be more like a thriller exactly it just didn't give me that that's vibe. why it's cozy like she literally hit him with a kayak and that's yeah. how he like dropped the she gun was in. Ninja. <laughs> she was yeah. ninja i mean all the women yeah. were ninja lana oh no, my she's god great. yeah she's lana's really such a good character background in her career and all that kind of thing and um her career kind of took a turn and mm -hmm. all her energies clearly at the at the time wasn't really good with beth her daughter mm -hmm. yeah her granddaughter you know, was they had more of a chemistry mm -hmm. and stuff, but as it started unveiling, you start seeing their characters kind of more develop and their guards are let down. I did like the overall like mother yeah. daughter like yeah. and the way that their relationship progressed over time right. and you know you could definitely tell tell Lana eventually got to the point where she was really comfortable wanting to take care of Beth right. too right. and that was really sweet and I also liked Lana's like story arc with her cancer in this book like mm -hmm. at the end of it they said her tumors were like shrinking and she could go back to her life and she decided to like stay with them right mm -hmm. or, or she like moved in with them in a different place or something yeah she like stayed in the area mm -hmm. like they said she could go back to like her job and her life right. and she decided to stay with the family which I, I think, thought was cute you, you know, know it, was it just shows you I think what it does is <laughs> It's kind of show you what you thought was priority is important. Yeah, like and when you have family really matters you know, in your when life. you're sick and what, like that kind of thing, and you've com completely changed life experiences. Mm -hmm. um, it's it just opens you up for vulnerability in yeah. both their cases. Although there was walls, these sort of things brought the walls down, and it also really um, showed their true character that mm -hmm. was really underneath it all. That because they didn't have that security and that love growing up together as family it all kind of came together and more appreciated mm -hmm. and, and you feel that part i mean i do like the book you yeah. know when it comes to mm -hmm. that and the relationships I mean, were good i could watch i could watch a movie just based on that mm -hmm. and go develop more under that but that's what i mean this would make a cute movie i mm -hmm. think how did you feel about martin being revealed as like the person behind everything you know i kind of went there yeah a little bit i mean you, you it it does leave you uh, skeptical of Diana and him, mm -hmm. and um, they were really focusing in on uh, Paul. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, I was leaning towards okay, but what about Scotty? Yeah. I mean, what the heck does Scotty have to do with it? Yeah, apparently nothing. <laughs> you know, yeah, and it was just things like I said that were kind of thrown out there that were camouflage to make you which you yeah. know tricked you. Yeah, and and it, and it took you in a different direction. But I still had. My original thoughts. Well, how old is Martin? How old is Diana? Mm -hmm. And how old is, you know? And well, if, then Ricardo was like sleeping with Diana. That I didn't see coming. <laughs> no, but I thought, okay, this is weird because I thought maybe Martin slept with Cara, Cor, Cora. Cora? The mom that got killed. Oh. <laughs> Cause, because I didn't know how old he was. Yeah. You know, they really didn't confirm their age then she never said their ages listen to me i was surprised by the like ricardo was involved with diana kind of mm -hmm. thing because then yeah. he he was like telling her like yeah let's go along with your plan but then he was like secretly planning with the dad right. behind her back kind of thing so then right. they had an argument and then that's why everybody suspected diana of killing him because she had an argument with him the night before or something i was kind of surprised that it ended up being martin instead of diana that was involved but i also like I don't know. I feel like with the mystery part of this book, it was the part that I cared the least about. Mm -hmm. Like, I did not care. Like, oh my God, by the time they were talking about like the land and the trust and the fucking tax write-offs. Like, who cares? Like, yeah, like, you know? who cares? I don't care about this. The whole thi the whole reason behind this murder was to like use the land for something else. Like, they yeah. all wanted to use the land for something else. And I think that's really boring, personally. It's not my favorite reason for murder. Ozark. <laughs> so good, though. Yeah, it kind of does have Ozark vibes, but like, just watch Ozark. Yeah. You don't need to read this. I don't know. <laughs> when it came together... In the end where they were all, I did like it. And then I was glad to see Paul had nothing to do. Yeah. I, I thought it was too obvious from the beginning. I was like, there's no way Paul's involved because that's way too obvious. That, well, like, you know, he was gone. He was gone <laughs> the exact same time, yeah. which what a coincidence. So it, they tried to make him look like it was, there was more. So final thoughts? Um, A fun time. Yeah. Would you read Anything. more from this author again in the future or no? Um, Well, I'd like to see a rating first, you know. <laughs> 
but he is a good writer. I just mm -hmm. really, it's, they mentioned, thank God, it was her first first book. <laughs> so I'm, I'm giving her so much slack for that. I think it depends for me too. Like, I don't know if I would read another from this author. Like if she does more, like if she does another book that's in the same vein as this, that's kind of like a cozy mystery, I probably wouldn't. Yeah. But if she comes out with something that's a little bit more darker, a little edgier, yeah. Yeah. then I'm per I maybe would because I do like the way that she writes her characters. Right. It was just specifically like the tone of this book mm -hmm. that was a little too silly for me personally. Yeah. But yeah, overall, it was a good time. I'm it glad that we read time. it. I'm me glad too. that we were able to do this. Me too. <laughs> also, did you see my mom's like vlogging clips throughout this video? Like, are you kidding me? You're like a whole ass booktuber. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're like straight up professional. Uh, I just you know. asked her, I was like, can you film some B-roll for me to like use in between the like clips of us talking? And like, look at okay. her. Are you kidding okay. me? No, but I'm, I'm telling you, wait till you haven't got the last part now. Oh my gosh. There's more footage. Wow. It, it's, I don't know how much it's time a petition you got. for my mom to become no. a booktuber. <laughs> just, I love this. It's, I'm, and you know, it makes it even better. I'm a mom in it up, but mm -hmm. these are going to be a forever moment. They are. You know, and any mom out there yeah. understands the, the privilege it is to be able to see your loved ones doing success with their with their lives and it's out there. I can go to number one <laughs> vlog when we first move here. I yeah. can always go YouTube. I can watch them all and they're it's always there. there. It's been, it's been a journey. Yeah. But yeah. 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 <laughs> I can't wait for you to see that when I'm putting up next. Oh, uh -huh. until next time. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. If you have read this book, you'll have to let me know and let us know what you think about it. For let real. us know in the comments of this video. Yeah. And also if there are any books that you think would be great for a video like this, for us to buddy read like this in the future that you would love to see us read, then do let us know because yeah. you know, there are lots of thrillers coming out later this year in the second half that I think would be fun to do a video kind of like this for. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with us. Yeah. And we will see you very soon Thank in you. another one. Okay. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Oh, dream, I want you dream.